uh, down to the younger generation, it is vitally important. In my last evidence, I recommended a Māori body made up of tohunga and experts in their respective fields, men and women, be formed at both a national and regional levels to restore ownership, control and distribution of all Māori knowledge that comes from a traditional base. I see that the same body would need to remain in place until such a time that they are satisfied that Māori values and concepts of our systems and laws are firmly woven into the fabric of New Zealand society. I also recommend that this body or group be recognised at a national level and hold equal partnership with the Ministry of Education. I see regional organisations such as the Ngāti Wai Trust Board being, a crucial, being crucial to advise any national body and re-educate as a vital ingredient of redress. We still have our marais and our kāingas uh, uh, right where they were uh, prior to the Treaty of Waitangi. And uh, we have continued to live there. We have continued to practice our, our uh, practices in terms of gathering kai mōna, in terms of gathering uh, kai from the ngahere, and that sort of thing. It's new legislation today that impacts upon uh, our right to do that. Uh, we acknowledge that there's been a lot of impact on natural and physical resources, and of course we want to be part of restoring that rather than uh, the uh, system itself um, saying that it's going to do it for us. So much stuff has been taken off us that we've got nothing to share anymore. Except our intellectual property. And um, for me personally, I'd really like to see um, those government bodies or whoever they are to work with us in developing something that we can all um, be happy with, especially our people. You know, it's, it's well documented, it's well known that uh, you know, you'll only find Māori in Aotearoa. I believe that the Y262 is the most important claim that is happening for Māori at the moment. And I believe that the Department of Conservation understands that as well. So that when we talk about how the manner in which they uh, manage our offshore islands and our endangered species of flora and fauna, uh, that they understand that Ngāti Wai is a claimant to the Y262, that Ngāti Wai does see all of those, re those uh, island bi biota as being very important to Ngāti, Wai's, Ngāti Wai now and into the future. If, if the outcome was, was, uh, was of a... Um of a positive nature from the uh, fr from the Waitangi Tribunal and the Crown would be uh, the recognition of Ngāti Wai in its own rohe and um, and and the, the thought that the claim would protect all Ngāti Wai's taonga. I think all all of us need to take on uh, that the responsibility of respecting. Uh, uh, and protecting. I think that the uh, way forward is dialogue, it's the uh, development and nurturing of relationships with each other. Um, because, the, uh, because Western power paradigm obviously has their view of what the law is requiring them to do and of course we have our own view of our responsibilities to how we protect uh, the uh, natural and physical resources in the environment. Those who uh, actually started this claim, um, we are very, very grateful for their vision and that they've created a pathway for uh, Ngāti Wai and all its uh, uh, the children of the future, its mokopuna, to uh, grasp this claim and actually take it beyond. And uh, that's been good for Ngāti Wai. And, uh, and when Ngāti Wai clearly understands the full extent of the floor and floor claim, I think we're going to be really, we're going to be really um, pushing our capacity to move forward into the future. This claim is about how is it that we can live together in a way where two laws can mingle and operate 
side by side. There's nothing separatist about that. It's just that New Zealanders are a particularly mono society, monolingual, one house of parliament. It's not a federal system, it's one state, and everything has to be one, mono this, mono that. I teach legal history. Um, I've been talking about legal history to my class just in the last couple of weeks from the period in the, in the 12th century in England. In the 12th century in England, there were folklore custom systems that were still operating. There was the common law system of the king, which was building up some strength, but by no means controlled the whole country. There was the canon law of the church, which also applied. There were a whole series of legal systems operating side by side. The languages of those legal systems were different. The custom law system was English. The ordinary folk spoke English. The royal system was French. The ruling people spoke French. They came from Normandy, they spoke French. Their laws were written in French. All of the acts of the English Parliament were written in French. Um, and uh, the, uh, the courts of the, uh, of the church, that was in Latin. So these systems work side by side. Most societies in the world uh, can operate perfectly easily with uh, different systems of law and of culture and of language operating side by side. Actually, most countries in the world think that that's a wonderful virtue of pluralism. Uh, New Zealand's sort of this little outpost in the South Pacific that seems to think we all have to be the same. Uh, when you hear those integrationist type of remarks like, isn't this separatism, isn't this racial privileging, and so on. So I, I think one should sternly reject that, that, uh, that, that approach and say, no, this is about inclusiveness and uh, tolerance of diversity uh, and, and, and indeed healing the hurts that um, that, that integrationist um, policies of the past have imposed. Uh, and again, um, the old school systems where people were not allowed to speak Māori in the playground and, and all stories that have been collected by many people uh, about, uh, about that and have been recounted, some of them, to the tribunal in this hearing as well. Uh, that, uh, that we should be happy to have uh, those differences living side by side uh, in our country. There is a desire to work together with each other. It's, the, it's them themselves, Western Paradigm, and whether they want to work with us. My full name is Hemanuya Tawaki Witana. It is the name my grandfather Tuki Pangari gave me. I have altered provided evidence to the Waitangi Tribunal in this Y26 claim in 1998. I wish to summarize the main points of that evidence to refresh the tribunal after such a long time. The Y262 claim is, is about us trying to convince the Crown that our world is important and should be respected. The Ngāpuhi we are signatories to the Treaty of Waitangi signed on 6th of February 1840. And my grandfather was one of them that signed it. Everything in our world is related through whakapapa. Whakapapa is a tie that binds us together with our environment, our tonga, our ancestors and our future. Our reo is sacred. Our language encompasses Mother Earth and Sky Father, Papatunuku and Ranginui through to Io and the sacred heavens in the realm of Honoki Wairua. Because every valve of this reo is embedded with tapu, the language, language and its concepts carry the tapu as well. A, E, I, O, U, Ka, Ai, Te, Te, Whenua. I, O, Ka, I, O, Te, Ai, Te, Whenangi. U, Ka, U, Ki, Te, Ai, U, Kei, Po, and place in the ninth heaven called Wainua. We have whakapapa for the connections between rains, moons, stars, ngāwhetu, and the sun. We have whakapapa for the winds, the sea, the clouds, the rivers and lakes, ngāwaitai, the mountains and the mists, through to the heavenly realms and all other aspects relating the rhythm of our world. These whakapapa relationships 
extends through Tane down to children of Tane and the Hapano and Hapu of today. We have the obligation to exercise our kaitiakitanga in relation to our mātauranga, our reo, our taonga katoa, right down to the genetics of the resource. The Tiriti Waitangi guarantees us our tinoranga tiratanga over our whenua, our kāinga and our taonga katoa. We need that tinoranga tira in order to exercise our kaitiakitanga. Omutu. When I first got involved with the, with the the Y262 flora, flora and fauna claim, uh, and when I uh, when I when I heard them talking about matauranga, tikanga, matauranga, and te reo, I first of all got first of all thought, what has matauranga, tikanga, and te reo got with uh, plants and animal? But when I start to hear people like uh, Dell, and I've known Dell for many years, and then uh, Sana Murray, with her, you know, with their passion for it, and of course Witty McMath, who is my my Fanunga, same person with this passion for it, I I I started to ask myself, what what are they really uh, talking about? And I come to the conclusion, when you're talking about fauna and flora, you're talking about the lot, right? You're talking about those things that were, was a resource to me that sustained my people over their journey of life, which I don't have access to. And when you see it from that point of view, you see that the uh, connection between the fauna and the flora and Mātauranga becomes part and parcel of the whole Māori worldview. 